Jesus' adult Bible study is uh, going through 1 John. Our text this morning is also 1 John, 3rd chapter, verses 1 through 3. In Jesus' name, Amen. You know, one of the familiar rituals when a child is born is the parade of relatives and friends coming in and trying to figure out who does this child look like? The color of the eyes, the color of the hair, the shape of the nose, the chin, the cheeks, all trying to predict what will this child look like when it grows up and who will, who will it resemble? In our text this morning, St. John avoids that speculation. But he understands our curiosity. Oh, not about who will one of our children look like, but who will we, God's children, look like? He writes, Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like... Like what, John? Come on, give us a break. What will I look like when Jesus reappears? Jesus shows us what he will, we will look like when he appears. And that question, what will we look like when he comes, is a lot more than the color of my eyes and the shape of my nose. It's really asking, how will my whole eternity look? What will my life, what will my future look like all the time that you and I are waiting for Jesus to be here? You know, time doesn't always bear out our predictions. We know exactly what that red-headed kid yeah, is going to look like. We find out the red turns to brown, even in some cases, blonde. Scripture reminds us that here on earth, we have just a vague glimpse of what will be revealed when Christ reappears to bring to completion all of that which he has promised. And it's only to that now. As much as we want to know, and as much as we want to predict the future that God has in mind for us, we're limited by the fact that you and I live an earthly life. And we live in a mortal frame that often gives us mortal pain. And we see through eyes that have the blinders of the present moment and of sin and death. We look for what we see only vaguely. And what sustains us is not the fact that we know and have a clear vision of the future, but the fact that we know the kind of love the Father has given us. The kind of love that makes you and me his children. The kind of love that has restored us to be his own in Christ, marked us as his in baptism, declared us righteous and holy. Only well, we don't see it. We just see our sins and our failures. And we can't see beyond those sins and failures except through the eyes of faith. And even now, that's not our clear vision of the future. But it's the only vision of the kind of love that the Father has for us as his children, the kind of love that we have seen in his life and his death and his resurrection. For too many of us, that's not only a puzzle, it's a problem. We stand where we've always stood, insisting that God reveal everything or we're going to believe nothing. How's that working? How that worked for Thomas. Thomas who said, I'm not going to believe anything that I cannot see or touch. And when troubles come into our lives, we're not really like Thomas, we're like Job. We demand to know why these afflictions have befallen us. But nevertheless, Jesus shows us what we will be like 
when he appears. God doesn't explain himself fully to us. He doesn't give in to our stubborn demands. Instead, he points us to Jesus. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when Jesus appears, you shall be like him, because you have seen him as he is. You and I are going to be like Jesus. It's enough to see Jesus. Because when you see Jesus, you see your future. It's enough to see Jesus. Because you know exactly how it will be. Remember when Philip was asking Jesus, he says, hey, Jesus, I want to see the Father. And Jesus said, you don't have to see the Father. If you see me, you've seen the Father. That's enough. Good Hebrew word for that. Benayu. It is enough. Great Passover song, the denial. It is enough. It is enough. If God has made us his children, it is enough if we have seen Jesus. And we have seen the Father as the Father can be seen until the day that our whole conditions change. It is enough. It is enough to have this hope within you. It's not required that you see everything that will be or that you'll know everything that will be. If you have seen Jesus, it is enough. He is the author and the pioneer of the one who charts the course of your life of what you shall be. He's the one, the firstborn of the dead, the one who prefigures exactly what we shall be. He is the glorious one in whom we hope. While we are here and live in the humiliation of a world still tinged by sin and death, if you have Jesus, it is enough. I have a friend, Daryl Orbey, a well-known artist living in Maui. Broke the 6,000 barrier. That means he sold a painting for $6,000. He did wonderful work in his earth painting. And yet, I watched him as he covered up an old painting with his name. Have you ever seen that happen? I mean, there he is working on an old canvas. At first, you don't know what in the world he's painting. They're just these broad strokes of color beginning to cover up the previous work of art. Our lives are like that. Because we aren't the painter, we can't always see or make out what's on the canvas of our lives. It seems terribly slow at times, and we can't see you know, that anyone's really in charge. But God calls us to patience and wait for his work to unfold. And it is often a hidden work. Our lives are hidden. The image is discernible only to God and the spirit who is at work within us, among us, and through us. He may allow us glimpses from time to time, but not much more than that. And though it's hidden, we trust the Lord who is painting on our lives. What God is painting on the canvas of our lives isn't some reflection of our hopes and our dreams and our priorities or our desires. No, what God is painting on the canvas of our lives is nothing less than Jesus Christ. The old me is gone away. The new me arises by the grace of God flowing from my baptism. The new me looks an awful lot like Jesus. But we, yeah, we have seen what he is like. It is God at work, painting on the canvas of our lives. It's amazing. The brush of God. The brush of God is his work. The brush of God is his word of written scripture. The brush of God is the visible word of his sacraments. And through his means of grace, God is at work 
in you and me painting Christ onto our minds and our hearts and our lives. Painting even the canvas of our creation. We can't see what we will be. We certainly aren't what we were. But God is working to unfold our future. Because God is painting on the canvas of other Christians as well as me. Giving them the same new identity that you and I receive in baptism. That they naturally become like Jesus. Even as we are becoming like him. Remember John the Baptist? Pointed to Jesus and said, he must increase and I must decrease. This is God at work on you and me in our lives. The gradual covering up of all that is useless in me and the slow revelation of all that is Jesus. Jesus showing us what we will look like when he appears. In Jesus' name.